Hey everyone and welcome back to today's tutorial where we are going to be looking at a rigid body simulation. Um, this is a rather simple simulation and I thought it would be fun just to highlight what uh, what use it, it could be for and uh, also just to show you that the rigid body simulations are not that difficult in Blender. So, um, so yeah. So the thing that we are going to be dealing with is this uh, setup here that I'm currently also um, working with in uh, in other scenes and other explorations in 3D, um, where we have these ear earbuds here. Um, and uh, yeah, first of all, I know that it's been a, a bit since I last uploaded a video. Uh, I'm currently working on a rather big client project, so it's taking up a lot of my time. So I'm sorry for this. Um, and uh, hopefully I can still make a few tutorials in the coming weeks here. Um, but yeah, uh, but yeah, so in this tutorial we are using a rigid body simulation and using force fields to, to guide our objects. So if I'm just going back to the start frame here, uh, you can see that we have all of our um, yeah, air, earbuds, and I've just placed them randomly around our scene. And when I hit, um, let me just go into the front view here. When I hit play, you can see that they hit each other and they start to uh, rotate around and kind of intertwine with each other and spinning around in this like sort of loop here. Also bouncing a bit off when they hit each other. Um, down here, I have set up two cameras, and this is also a nice technique that I can just share with you. If you go down to the timeline down here, um, you can, for example, at frame 60 here, um, you can, first of all, you can, under the marker here, you can add a mark. And um, so now we have a marker set to the, uh, to the frame 60 here. And then you can actually uh, choose your camera up here and right click and then uh, oh uh, hit marker again and uh, isn't that the how did I do it um, maybe up here I just forgot how, how to do this kind of thing I think when you I should be able to uh, oh yeah, bind it's up here uh, oops um uh, when we have our marker set down here, we can go to marker again and we can bind camera to marker. Uh, to marker. So now this is the camera that is marked to it. We can also choose the other camera here, hit that one, this one, and then we can um, bind this camera to the marker. So you can see in the beginning, as soon as we hit frame 60, we turn to the other camera here. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to delete markers for this one. So I've just placed the first camera then the second camera, a closer one, and then going back to the first camera for, from the end frame. So this is just the camera way. But working with cameras and, and markers, I just, I find it easy to visualize how I want the end animation to look like. But yeah, so, uh, so this is our scene, and I'll just turn off this one again here so it's a bit clearer. And we have a few force fields in our scene, and I'm just going to delete all the fossils just so you can see it from the beginning. So right now we have, and I think I need to, under the rigid body here, we can, under the cache, we can delete the page. So if I go into this view here, you can see when I hit play, nothing happens. And um, actually under the um, scene properties here, under field weights, I have turned the gravity all the way down and you can see it's starting up and then when I hit play, it just fall down. So you have to go into the um, scene properties and then under, you know, this is your scene, then under rigid body world, you can scroll down to field weights and turn off gravity. Um, so now the scene does not have any gravity to it uh, in the beginning. So yeah. Uh, but we want these to collide with each other, so we all need to kind of attract them to the middle, uh, to the center of our frame here. So, first of all, let me just hide this one. First of all, I'm going to add a force field, and the first force field that we're going to be using is just a normal force field. And I'm just going to scale it down, applied scale, 
uh, whoops, further down, apply scale, say down a notch here, then maybe just like this here. So now we have our force field placed and our uh, earbuds are placed around this force field here. And uh, the, the earbuds themselves, under the physics property, I have added a rigid body. And I've just the said the, I play play around with the mass of your object depending on your object. For this one, I found just like five kilos would be sufficient, and we have a surface response point on zero point two and bouncing at zero point two. And our collision shape is just set to convex uh, hole. If you have like a more complex one, you can use a mesh. If you have a cylinder or a sphere, you can use that. Um, the sensitivity in the collision mark is set very low, so. Uh, they will collide with each other, but they will collide so that it looks like they are hitting each other, though there are a small gap. Um, this wouldn't, of course, be true in real life, but you will notice it in this render here. And it also helps to make the uh, simulation run more smoothly. And under the uh, di dynamics, we have just added the deactivating here, uh, and the collision, yeah, it's set to, to its basic. So all of these objects here, they have a rigid body uh, set to it, and they all have the type of active because they are all going to be active uh, rigid bodies within our simulation, all uh, acting to each other. So we don't have like a plane that is passive and then something falling down onto that passive flow. They're all in movement here. Um, so yeah, so you can see here, we have our force field. And when I start to hit play, you can see now they are like expanding, so they are being pushed away from the force field. And we want it to go into the force field, so we'll just add a negative number, and we can just add minus uh, 5,000. And uh, when I hit play, you can see now they are colliding. So they all go into the center, just like this, and it already, already looks kind of cool. But it's still static, like they try to all try to go into the middle, so it's kind of a bit boring, I think. So the next force field that we're going to add is a turbulence force field. And I'm going to scale this also all the way down to the size of our original force field. And here we, I played around and it worked for my thing that worked with like 10,000 strength. You have to play with rather big numbers uh, with these force fields. So when I play in this one, you can see now we have a lot more movement. They are acting and turning around and also going um, on all of the axis kind of a way. Um, you can see it's bouncing around and moving around. And, and I really want to control like the rotation. I really only want it to go like around also when we go further into the simulation. So the last fossil is a vortex here, a vortex. And I'm just going to rotate it, making it point towards the camera, or we can just scale it down like this, just like this here. And we're giving it a 15,000. So now it should move quickly and also rotating nicely with um, actually against the clock, so to say. So this is basically our uh, simulation and you can see that it can be used in a quite fun way. Like this is something that's quite realistic. It's a simple scene, but we also have some some floating objects that collide with each other. And um, in this scene here, we have these objects here and they are rather simple. And to have a good simulation, you need a good typology. So as you can see here, uh, we have quads in, in all of our, um, and all of our objects here, they are nicely squared. And uh, this helps with the simulation and it's nicely also uh, like a dense um, typology. So we have a lot of subdivisions, so it just looks really good. And it collides really well with all of the surfaces uh, on, the, on our object. Um, and then actually all I had was just for the rendered scene, um, was just, uh, I've set up the materials, uh, with a black and a matte and, a, and, a, and this nice green color. And remember, you can get this exact file with the earbuds included 
on my Patreon, uh, where you can also explore the scene a bit more yourself. But in all sense, you could put everything into this scene if you want to. Um, doesn't need to be earbuds. It can be, you know, soda cans. It's also like where I thought it would look kind of cool with like, um, with them colliding with each other or, you know, you could also just have one from the side and, and the earbud from the other side and just attracting them with a the force wheel to the middle and they kind of like collide and bounce into each other and bounce away from each other also afterwards to have this like really cool impact way. So rigid body is actually quite easy to work with in Blender. It just needs a bit of tweaking. And the, you can also play around with the bounciness. You can give it more bounciness so that when the earbuds hit each other, they bounce away more quickly. Uh, you might then see that some of them might get out of hand and out of the um, force field, but then you need to play with that strength also. And uh, yeah, so it's all a, all about swinging. And that's really the case with all of my tutorials is that they might be rather simple setups uh, and not there's not a lot of, uh, of things uh, going on. But uh, the individual tweakings in, when, with the physics are really specific to my specific scene. And that's why I get these results. Also with the other simulations that I have made, the, the reason why they work so well is because I have used a lot of hours trying different settings with the cloth or particle system. And there's no quick way to get the professional look and the professional work. It's just about... Um, keep grinding and perfecting the scene. Um, so yeah, uh, so just try out as best as you can with your scene and hopefully you can get something nice as well. This is a rather simple simulation with rigid bodies, but don't be afraid to play around with things colliding with each other with rigid bodies. It's actually quite fun to see how the force feels and you can get interesting variations. For example, this frame here, which I also uploaded to my Instagram. I really like the composition where we have this one kind of leaned towards this one here with these things in the background, uh, like pointing. I just really like the, the composition of this shot here, especially. Um, so yeah, and you can like find all, all sorts of cool and interesting uh, shapes. So this one here, you can see it down this yeah, but here you can see the logo up here. Yeah, nice stepped up build. And also going back here, it's a totally different look, but it all depends on what you like. So, um, so yeah, thank you so much for for this quick tutorial today, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to make something soon again. I'm planning on doing some materials uh, within Octane just to show you how you can, for example, make glass or. Uh, all the cool materials in, in Octane for Blender. Um, and yeah, so, um, but yeah, this is uh, just a cool, small, fun thing to do. So um, see you for the next one. Bye.